So uh, we had a brief talk about all the function mm -hmm. of the Taylor neck yeah. and the Taylor, of Taylor body fractures. I'm hoping I can take control of this screen. So there, the surgical approaches are fairly well known. You saw some nice pictures. I'm sorry, it is not advancing. There we go. So the medium allele approach gets you in to see the whole Taylor body. The lateral approach, which uh, Dr. Sook showed us, gets you into the most important part of the lateral side of the Taylor neck. And some people like the posterior approach, particularly with the posterior comminuted facet injuries. Internal fixation uh, is fairly uh, standardized at this point. This is where the hardest bone is. It's the place where more likely you can get an anatomic read to set your rotation. And this is the area where the uh, comminution is most likely to occur while you'll need a plate. This is what those incisions look like on a real live human. And when you are making this approach, be very cautious. The blood supply to the Taylor neck is running right up here. Keep your retractor right over the fracture. Stay away from that dorsal neck. This is the lateral approach, uh, and this is a common injury. So the technique for reduction is to recreate the space between the tibia and the calcaneus with the use of your assistant or ephemeral distractor, rotate the body into position, and then get the neck anatomically aligned. So you can see that there's no room for the body in here because the calcaneus has risen up and the talus has risen up. So you have to get that space in there first. And one way to do that is to put a Kirshner wire in the neck and a Kirshner wire in the body, distract them. So you don't have to separate the soft tissues. You can just rotate this through an indirect reduction technique. And when you turn that neck down and body up, you'll see this body disappear and the neck re return into your small approach. The canale view interoperatively, as Dr. Sook pointed out, is very important to reestablish your alignment. An anatomic reduction it requires fixation on both sides. But again, preserve this blood supply. This is where all the blood to the Taylor neck is coming from. So back in state of the art, uh, the operatively treated talus fractures have a pretty poor outcome with about 19% of them having significant morbidity. In the modern area with some of our own patients that we followed for four years, open fractures definitely did worse. About 88% of them actually healed and the risk of avascular necrosis was high but manageable. 19 of the 39 patients with complete radiographs developed some form of AVN, but only 12 of those collapsed. So less than a quarter of them actually collapsed and 54% of them had subtalar arthrosis. CT scans are really helpful for managing the body. Uh, often helpful to have a femoral distractor, as Dr. Ferkel pointed out, for the small ones, for the uh, arthroscopically assisted. And the Taylor body fractures do a little less well than the Taylor neck fractures, just because the degree of comminution and the amount of cartilage that's usually involved in these highly comminuted fractures. A distractor allows you to now see in there, whether it's a scope or an arthrotomy or an open incision. And the medium malleolus is added on when you just can't see it, as Judy pointed out, you have to be able to get in. This is a beautiful anatomic reduction done by my partner, Sean Nork, that went on to avascular collapse and fusion a few years later. So six months after you can see it narrowing a little bit, but that one actually did go on to collapse. Taylor body outcomes are not good. Getting them as anatomic as you can and hoping for the best helps. At two years, they're doing okay. At three years, chylectomy. And I think this patient made it out to five years before I had to do an arthroplasty. So AVN is not a death uh, set sentence, but it is a bad thing. Check for Hawkins sign at six to eight weeks by getting, uh, by getting an AP view of the ankle. Uh, it's fairly reliable, not highly predictable, but it's worth having just for your conversation with the patient. So in summary, these are super challenging injuries that affect the ankle, subtalar, and talonavicular joint. Malunions are frequent. They're often left in varus. So just taking the foot through a range of motion that before you close up to make sure you're not in varus is helpful. Rigid fixation with early motion and weight bearing determined by fracture healing is the current standard of care. Thanks, apologize for the interruption.